O Lord arise, and let your enemies be scattered. Many times, despite the plethora of privileges, and opportunities that salvation and new birth accorded us, believers, there are still some forces that we, many times may have to contend with or to conquer. Apostle Paul, in the book of 1 Corinthians, called it the adversaries. He captures it this way. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. The great and effectual doors, have also been opened to you and me, by the virtue of our faith, in the acceptance of the sacrifices of Jesus Christ. Particularly his death on the cross for our redemption. But been that our salvation is not given to us by default, we have some roles to play to make it our reality. This is evident in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12 where Jesus says, but as many as received him, to them gave ye power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is the evidence that we have got something to do, to actualize our redemption. And in regards to the adversaries, who try to create doubts about the reality of Christ, by attempting to deny us our redemption packages and privileges. The scriptures hid under God and wage war against them, and he assures us of victory. These adversaries can be self, the devil, urged to sin. But principally, the devil. But we have got to conquer them all. We must, however, understand that the devil rarely comes in the form of a physical personality. No, he doesn't. Sometimes he, the devil, comes in the form of human recruits, agents, or devil's cohorts, who make themselves available for the devil to use. The devil may use them to accuse you, revile you, annoy you, tempt you, lie against you or cause you to lie. The devil can cause you to commit adultery or fornication, or obstruct your access to some redemptive packages, and a host of other strategies he may employ. Including betrayal by somebody you know, or he may come to aggrieve you, or provoke you to anger. These enemies or the adversaries as Paul called them, may also manifest their presence in the form of persistent failure, persistent denials, and deprivation. Sometimes, the presence of these adversaries, is attributed to the failures, misfortunes, and unsuccessfulness. Some other people blame it on bad luck, curses, others on things like because I don't have a connection. It is due to tribalism and racial discrimination because they don't like me and so on. But giving all those explanations and analysis won't help much that's if it ever helped at all. The only solution or thing any person can do to conquer the devil, and establish the victory that Christ has obtained for us, is to engage God. By seeking his help through the prayer of faith. And when God comes to your aid, adversaries and the indicators of their presence vanishes. That was what Paul meant when he said in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us? who can be against us? Indeed one with God is the majority, and for you, you are not only the majority but a victor, and a conqueror. Paul says, in Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So no woes, misfortunes, and troubles remain in people's life. When God comes into the equation of their life. All woes, troubles, and negativities will vanish like mist. No troubles or challenges withstand God. God can change 20 years of woes, to blessings in a twinkle of an eye. He can repair what took the devil 20 years to damage in a second. He can restore opportunities that were lost with gains. A day of God's favor, can pay or compensate for the entire life's labor. And God is an expert in doing that. We saw him do it, in the book of Genesis chapter 41. How Joseph, a prisoner in a foreign land, Egypt, was translated from a prisoner to becoming the prime minister, just in a few minutes. In the book of Daniel chapter 2 verses 48. Daniel, a man taken captive from Israel, in a moment, became the head of the wise men of Babylon. What about Mordecai, from gatekeeping to a noble, and a man who found favor, with the king? What about Esther, a surrogate to his father's brother Mordecai, in another parlance, she could even be called a maid, 
house girl, or even an orphan, turned into the queen of the most powerful nation of the time. When God opens a person's books of remembrances, their stories change instantly for the best. It becomes a total turnaround. Your problem, isn't about the devil because, God has already fixed the devil where he belongs. In the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, the Bible says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So your problem isn't about the devil, or any of the above adduced devilish tools. The problem is that, God hadn't stepped in, to rescue you. God hasn't come to your aid. For if he had, every challenges would disappear, in the speed of darkness when the light comes. The psalmist, teaches us how to invite or call God, into our situation in the book of Psalm 68. And when God intervenes, all the woes and their causes, are routed and destroyed altogether. Be it the devil, personal weakness, race, tribe, whatever. We saw it in the cases of Joseph, Daniel, Mordecai, and Esther. Not even tribe nor race, was a prohibiting factor when the help of God came for them. Whenever God comes into a person's life, every siege bows out. Shackles of shame, delays, and reproaches are terminated and destroyed. God has assured us of his help, which inadvertently results in sweet victories, if we obey him. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. The Bible teaches us how to pray for God's help, against the enemies. Psalm 68 verses 1 to 35, says. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away, as wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God, yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, and a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah. The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God, even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance, when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein, thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it. Kings of armies did flee apace, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. Though ye have lean among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow and salmon. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels, the Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. But God shall wound the head of his enemies, and the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan, I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies, and the tongue of thy dogs in the same. They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after, among them were the damsels playing with timbrels. Bless ye God in the congregations, even the Lord, from the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler, 
the princes of Judah and their council, the princes of Zebulun, and the princes of Naphtali. Thy God hath commanded thy strength, strengthen, O God, that which thou hast wrought for us. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people. Till every one submit himself with pieces of silver, scatter thou the people that delight in war. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth, O sing praises unto the Lord, Selah. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye strength unto God, his excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places, the God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. Let us pray. Everlasting Father. King of kings and Lord of lords I thank you. Thank you for life, for your protection, for your provision, for your healing, for deliverance, and for the host of your other goodnesses, and good gestures towards us. Thank you for the victory of Christ on the cross, that has brought us redemption and hope. Dear Father Lord, arise O God, and get our enemies routed, and put to flight. Let all the plots, scheming, programmings against us, perish with them. Let all their counsels against us your children, be turned into foolishness. Arise dear Lord to help us. Let all the plans of the enemies, to delay us, afflict us be scattered. For they are not only our enemies, but by extension your enemies dear Lord. For everyone that opposes your plan for us, is your enemy, and I know and I understand, that your plans for us, are for good and not for evil. Therefore dear Lord, arises in your anger and indignation, to judge them that plan or wish us evil, according to your justice and judgment. For your judgment is pure and just. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today. We pray and share the Word of God on this channel every week and you are invited to be one of us. We know that our God can do all things. If you are with Him, you need not fear anything. Although at a times there may be storms of life in our lives. But one thing is always sure, God never abandons those who have their faith and eyes fixed on Him. Are you passing through some challenges or difficulties in life? Well, you are not alone in that situation. Our God is there by your side. Here is another video titled Dealing with Life's Challenges as a Christian is carefully handpicked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we believe that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will respond to you immediately. God bless you.